I saved the best for last. I, I saved the, the, this privilege for me uh, this time. We usually take turns uh, sharing the good news uh, at the end of each one of these programs. Uh, many of you have heard this before, and you've heard each one of us express it in our own unique ways. Uh, but maybe there's somebody that doesn't know the good news and who's listening right now. Or maybe someone will watch this video in the future and uh, they, they have not received the gift. Uh, so we don't want to be negligent and we want to make sure that, that they have the opportunity to hear what makes it, gives us our peace and joy. Uh, it's, this is called the gospel. And the word gospel means good news. It's the literal translation of the Greek word. <clears throat> I believe it's an understatement. Uh, it could easily be called the great news. Uh, we could even call it the greatest news ever. Uh, because if you really understand it, I say this all the time, but when, when I explain this to you, if you really understand it, and then you actually believe it's true and it applies to you. Uh, I don't know how you can restrain yourself. I, I think you'll have to jump for joy. It'll be the happiest moment of your life if you, if you have not understood it before. If today is the day you learn the truth and you believe it, this will be the happiest moment of your life. That, that's how good this news is I have for you. Now, everything I'm going to tell you is uh, found in the Bible. I'm going to say it in my own words, but if you go to every one of my videos in the description box, uh, I have the verses uh, that, uh, that uh, back up what I'm telling you now. Uh, the, 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 if you ask people, um, are you certain that when you die that you're going to go to heaven? What would you say? Um, go ahead and answer that right now. Just take a moment to think. What would you say if you were before God right now and God said, why should I let you into heaven? Uh, most people have answered the question when I ask them. They say, well, uh, I, I don't know for sure. I, no, I can't say I'm certain I'm going to go to heaven, but uh, I, I, pretty, I think I will. Or I, I'm, at least I, I'm hoping I will. And I, I said, well, uh, why? On what basis? Uh, why should God let you into heaven? And they, they invariably plea uh, their case based upon their own goodness, thinking that if they were good enough in their life, that they would be acceptable to God. Um, this is what we call self-righteousness. Um, but, but the Bible tells us that uh, all of us have sinned in our life. Now, I know that uh, some people sin more than others. Maybe you're one of the people that has is, is, is sinned less than the average person, and you're feeling pretty good about yourself. But the Bible says that, that uh, it's not a matter of how many sins. If, even if you've sinned one time, your status is you're a sinner. It says that if you've sinned once, it's just the same as if you've sinned every possible way. So it's not the numbers. It's not even the type of sin. Some people say, well, I never murdered anybody or I'm not a homosexual. <laughs> Whatever people want to elevate as the worst kind of sin in their mind. It's not the kind of sin that matters. It's not the number of sins. What's important for everybody to understand is that every one of us have sinned. The Bible says we all fall short of the glory of God. The glory of God, um, it could be understood as the standard that Jesus set in his life. The Bible says that Jesus lived a perfect life without any sin at all. That's the standard. And the Bible says that we must meet that standard of perfection in order to Qualify if, if you're trying to qualify on your own righteousness. You have to be, you, from your first breath until your last breath, you'd have to be able to go before God and say, I never sinned once. 
I've been perfect. Now think about the real implication of that. Because a sin is not just, you know, let's say you stole something or you lied or you you committed adultery. I mean, it's a lot of people, they, they identify certain things. Those are clearly sins. They're spelled out as sins. Uh, but the, uh, the, the Bible says that even a bad thought is a sin. So if you've even had any bad thoughts and if you've done any bad acts, and if you fail to do good at every time, every moment, failure to do good is a sin of negligence. If we're going to be honest with ourselves we, and really be a fair evaluation of our lives, uh, we probably have to realize that we, each of us sins many times every day. Multiply that over your life. We are serial sinners, every one of us. And the Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So the first thing to understand is that everybody's a sinner and that sin disqualifies us from heaven. And so people think, well, I'll stop sinning. Uh, well, first of all, it's impossible. No one can completely stop sinning. Uh, but what do you do about the sins before today? If you were able to stop sinning now, what about all the sins of your past? How are you going to handle that when God judges you? So you've got all the sins of your life up to today, and then you've got the struggle of uh, being, being deluded, think, well, I'm, from here on, I'm going to stop saying, forget about that. You need to understand what Jesus said to his apostles when they said, how is it possible for anyone to be saved? And Jesus said, with man, it is impossible. Do you hear that? It is impossible for you to make yourself acceptable to God on your own. But Jesus said, with God, it's possible. So the Bible says that God loves us so much that he sent his son to die for our sins. Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus is God Almighty. The Bible says that Jesus came down from heaven and became a man, God, manifest in the flesh. Jesus was God, and he was also man. He had to become a man because he says, I came to give my life as a ransom for many. A ransom is a payment made to set someone else free. So Jesus said the reason he came was to give his life for us, to set us free from our sin burden, this condemnation because of sin. And most people know that Jesus was crucified. He suffered and died on a cross. But the significance of that is that on that cross, on that day, the sins of all humanity through all history, from beginning of time until the end of time, all sins of humanity were put on Jesus' account, charged on him, put on him. Jesus, the Bible says he became sin for us. So much sin was put on him that he became sin for us. And the Bible says that his death served as a propitiation for our sin. Propitiation is a fancy way of saying it was a sufficient payment. He was successful in paying for all of our sins. Thank you, Jesus. You know, if you understand that, if you believe that, that Jesus has paid for all your sins, you should be celebrating already. But the Bible says that the wages of sin are death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. No one can argue with the fact that we're all mortals. I mean, uh, what age were you when someone first explained to you about death and death is waiting for every one of us? The Bible says that that uh, it is, is appointed for man uh, once to die and then the judgment. So everybody has a destiny, of fate. We live, we die, we get judged. So we're going to die because we're mortals. But the Bible says the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, eternal life. Now, all through time, people have always tried to find some way of achieving immortality. 
Even today, through science and technology, they're trying to find some way of gaining immortality. But the Bible says that we are mortal, but we can put on immortality by believing in Jesus. We will become immortal and live forever. The Bible says that there will come a day in the future. It could happen very soon, I think. The Bible says that there will be a general resurrection of all humanity. Every person who's ever lived will be resurrected, brought back to life, and go to the judgment. The people who like me and the saint, the believers in Jesus, we go to a judgment uh, so that we can receive the rewards for the ministry we had on earth. And we have eternal life, and we're going to spend eternity with eternal life and you know, heaven. But the people who didn't put their faith in Jesus, they get judged and they didn't receive the gift of eternal life. So they're still mortal and they can't live forever. So to me, the saddest thing in the world is for a person to go to that judgment and be told that Jesus paid for all your sins. You could have had eternal life. The, the barrier between you and God was removed. Jesus paid for your sins. Why would you not receive the gift of eternal life from Jesus? Why did you refuse over and over again your whole life and reject Jesus as your Savior? Because that's what it means when Jesus is your Savior. It means that he's the means of salvation. He gives you, you're saved from the condemnation and you get eternal life. But that doesn't have to happen because Jesus is offering you eternal life as a gift. Now, a gift is, is something that you don't pay for yourself. The Bible says that Jesus paid for it with his own blood. So Jesus buys the gift of eternal life with his blood and death and offers it to you right now. And you will have it. If you believe it, at the moment you believe it, you receive it. That's all that's required to believe this. What I'm telling you is a fact. You will have eternal life if you believe what I'm telling you is true and it applies to you. It happens in an instant as soon as you have this faith. So what I'm really asking everybody to believe is this, is in the conclusion, is this verse here. It's a... Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I have been persuaded that this is my future, that nothing can deny me this eternal life. So you just need to understand about the gift and the guarantee. Eternal life is offered to you as a free gift. You can't work for it and earn it, but Jesus did it for you. And it comes with a guarantee that nothing and all creation can prevent you from getting it. It's guaranteed by God. You starting to get excited? <laughs> you starting to get joyful? If you really believe this, then you've already received it. it. Before you even have to ask for it, as soon as you believe it, it becomes true. Believe that you are guaranteed to go to heaven and it's not because of anything you've done, but it's solely because Jesus paid for your sins and he, and he even proved this by raising himself from the dead so we can have confidence that his claims were true. Now, I promised you that this was going to be good news. <laughs> I promised you this would be the best news you've ever heard and I, I really, I, I just couldn't understand if someone really understands this and believes it, uh, you can't be celebrating right now. If you believe it, you've received it, make a comment and, and, and uh, let us know. So um, 
Again, thanks to everybody who's participated today. And uh, please join us every Sunday at 2 p.m. Pacific time. And also Wednesday nights, we have the Wednesday night Bible study. That's uh, 6.30 p.m. Pacific time. So bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus. Thank <laughs> you.